Assalamu alaikum and good evening to you. You're watching Storyline, an interesting and a new program on ITV that's going to bring to you, or to your notice rather, people who, are, who do very, very interesting things. Some people you may, some people you may not know, but these are people who in many ways are ordinary people doing very, very extraordinary things. Today we have with us Ahmad Sony. Ahmad is known to us in the Western Cape and perhaps even nationally for the work that he does. And in many cases, after we had had a chat, Ahmad tells me about his sojourns in Turkey and in Iran. So even they know Ahmad very, very well. Ahmad, welcome to the program. Just like a love for inviting me to your program. Ahmad, you know, um, we thought that you would be a very, very interesting uh, uh, person to talk to for, for this very, very first program. Because, you know, just the studio is such an enlightening studio. It's, it has a, almost a spirituality of its own work that you've done over years and years. I thought it'd be useful to chat to you. So we're going to try and explore who is Ahmad. Please tell me, where did all of this start? Ahmad Sony was born in Athlan, just down the road here. My father originally from Surat, India. My mother, a local mixture of Malay and Holland. I was born in 1948, so that makes me 66. Um, we started um, doing art from a primary school level, not necessarily Islamic art, different types of art, you know, Donald Duck, whatever, table mountain, flowers and stuff like that. The basic children's art. Definitely is. Yes. You know, any child, like any child was curious in art, you know, I always mm. liked to paint and that is where my passion came from, to paint. Um, my Islamic art career really started in 1982. But I think before I got to that stage where I did Islamic art, I trained before that, you know, I started working in a naval dockyard in 1964. In the naval dockyard? Naval dockyard, Simon Stan. In Simon Stan? Simon Stan. You know, unfortunately, I wanted to become a commercial artist going to varsity, and, but due to family commitment, I couldn't do that. I was taken out of school and said I must go work. So well, how old were you then? I was 16 years old. Okay. So lucky for me, I got an apprenticeship in Simon Stan dockyard. And, uh, they had a, a, a section here where they did art and uh, different types of badges and stuff like that. And I qualified to become part of that crew and I, I did my apprenticeship there. I passed after two and a half years and I became a fully fledged uh, artist in the Navy. But that position, Ahmad, if I may just butt in here, that, that position was actually for a painting job, not so. It was for a painting job, yes. When I went for my interview, you know, normally you put on three trays that you want to do, like I put on carpentry, electrical and plumbing. But living in a party time, you know, they said, no, those... What, what year would this be about 1964. Now? 1964. It's only for, it's a reserve for white people only. The only job I can get was painting or blacksmith. And I didn't want to become a blacksmith because I saw blacksmiths working on horses, okay. shoes and stuff like that, you know. Okay. So I thought painting would be fine by me. So I took the job and then when I came to the workshop, it was a, the foreman in charge said, no, I'll try it in the art department as well. Okay. And lucky for me, you know, I excelled in the art department and it kept me there. And that is where I started my career. So, so these badges, so the badges? Yeah, you know, for? each ship, each naval ship has got yeah. a badge, you know. Okay. All the Navy ships, all over the world, they all got their own badges. And that is where I started doing fine work and painting, you know, different things. Really work that I enjoyed, you know, but Islamically I only started in 1982. Mm. That is where I started my Islamic art career. So, so you, you, you don't have formal training? Where nothing is... whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. No, so, I've... no UCT fine arts? Nothing whatsoever. No, I firmly believe, you know, Allah guided me in, in what I am doing today, you know. The mere fact that I had to be taken out of school, the mere fact that I had to go and work in a dockyard, and the mere fact that that particular person saw that I had a talent for art, and he took me out from a painting section and put me on the artistic side. So Allah sort of guided me and the training that I got there really helped me a lot for the work that I'm doing today. Um, and they supply you obviously with the tools which is what, something that you needed at the time. Very, very, very similar, yes. Mm. You know, uh, but Islamic art came to me one Thursday night while reciting Quran. You know, uh, that's why I say, you know, this thing was, all, it was a greater architect planning my life for me. In 1982, I recited one Thursday night and I looked at the first page of the Holy Quran. And I thought to myself, you know, normally when an artist paints, you know, he gets an artist block. He sort of can't paint anymore. And that, that was one of those days, you know, where I didn't have the uh, inclination to paint anything. And I saw the first page of the Quran, I thought, let me paint this rather. 
and wallah, you won't be leaving since that time. I never had an artist block. I paint every day of my life I paint. The paintings just come automatically to me, you know. Is this the first page of the Quran? The very, yeah, the first page. With a very Quran. intricate yeah. design around Surah Fatiha? Is, That's it, is that what you're referring That's to? One, yeah. So you painted Surah Fatiha as your first, first project? First, first painting. Yes. MashaAllah. Uh, first painting. That's interesting. And I think I must have done over a thousand already since that time. You Surah Fatiha. No, 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 different, oh, oh, different, 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 different paintings. Yeah, you know? It just comes, you know, automatically. Mm. If I mm. do one painting, then the next one is already in my head. Okay. I don't know where it comes from, but automatically the paintings just come, mm. you know. So that first piece of piece of art, I think, works work of art that you had, is it still around? No, I still got it. Yes, I still got it. Oh, sure uh, I kept it. You know, it's okay. something that you can't really. Because that's history, isn't it? Yeah, it's something I won't sell. You know, it's not really a beautiful painting, but mm. I mean, it's it's more value it, to it. It was the start, it's start of something yeah. really, really big. Really, and as you say, there's a divine purpose to. There was a divine purpose. Right? Where we yeah. all uh, started, mm -hmm. and and and. Um, the, the, the family itself, how, how, how was the family supportive of what you were doing at the time? Because surely, if you're starting to paint, there was no, but, a need to support the family and so Yeah, but luckily me, I was still working at the time, you know. Ah, I was still okay. employed in the dockyard. Ah, okay. So you, you haven't I, left the, the dockyard? No, no, I never left the dockyard. But I prayed every night that something must happen to me so I can be retrenched, you know, I can go into early retirement or I can be boarded, medically boarded, so I can do something quite full time. It's a bad dua to make. But my dua, my dua was accepted. Okay, and how, how 19, was that? 1989, they sort of pretrenched people, and out of the blue, my name came up. And, and then I became a professional uh, artist. So, so you simply moved from the dockyard. And I came home. Into your own yard. Into my own yard. Uh, All right. And, and, and family, children, wife? I got three young, three, uh, three, uh, one son and two daughters. Okay. My son is also involved in art. He, he runs the gallery and uh, he paints as well. And um, my two daughters, they don't really paint, you know, but... But they are supportive. They're in my, yeah, they're in my and art. And Mrs. Sony, if I may ask? No, I mean, Mrs. Sony is trouble really, that you spend no, so much no, 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 no. time in, in what you do? I, I, I beg her every time to pick up a brush. I don't think she wants to pick no? up a brush. No, no, no. So no inclination, not, nothing much. It's not an do. area that she wants to explore uh, at all. I think she's a bit afraid I'm going to show her up, you know, I want to see her weakness. <laughs> <laughs> now, now um, where did you grow, grow up in, in Athlone? Was it part of a big yeah. milieu of people? It's just down the road, yeah, Grosser Street, right down the road, further down. Was it played your cricket and your soccer Played on the, the road. field, played you no know, marbles in the road, played with a top, played you know, playing with kites and stuff like that. Like normal children, yeah. you know, we grew up normal. Mm -hmm. It was good, you know, we grew up very poor, you know, in fact, uh, but we enjoyed it, you know, it was okay. nice, you know. Mm -hmm. But but what you were doing was at that time anyhow yeah, was out of the ordinary, isn't it? I mean everybody else was into trades and businesses and yeah. so on, and you now almost diverting from from what what is the norm. How how was it viewed by the, those around you? In fact, you know, when I started Islamic art, there was no Islamic art in South Africa. I couldn't find any Islamic art. I found calligraphy, you know, people writing with a pen and okay. paper. Yeah. Quran. There, there were quite a few of the older people. Yeah, but nothing really on canvas and paper, mm. you know, and mm. color. Okay. Except maybe for Ivan Kazi from uh, Grasipov, oh, yes. he used yes, to do yes. that type of thing, but nobody else here really mm. ventured into the field of doing Islamic art. Mm. And I felt, you know, uh, uh, you know, I needed some guidance and some support, but I couldn't find it in South Africa. Mm. But only up till 1994, when I was accepted internationally, then I could see myself, or judge myself against other artists. Okay. You know? Okay. And then I could see my strength and my weakness. Okay. You know, that was the first time. Now, you, what were some of the first real projects that you now you now on your own? You've left the dockyard. You started to to do work on your own. Wasn't it a bit of a frightful thing? How are you going to sustain yourself? Isn't it? Yeah, I think. Doesn't that cross your mind? It did cross my mind, you know. But but I have, I had faith in in, in in what I was doing. In, in I, had, I had a belief, you know, that there's a purpose for what I'm doing, and I have to carry on doing it. You mm. know, I firmly believe, and up to the day, I firmly believe, you know, there was a purpose for me going into Islamic mm. art. You know, since I started Islamic art, you know, uh, there are so many people doing it now. You know, people that have trained, people that have taken up art now. Mm. You know, uh, I reckon, you know, if I didn't carry on in those years, you know, there would have been no, I, would, I don't want to say there would have been no Islamic art, mm. but it wouldn't have been the same as what it is today now. The kind of impact that you've left behind yes. in terms of what? Even in Joburg, Durban, all over, you know, mm. where I go teach, mm. people are doing Islamic art now. Mm. You know, and, and I'm grateful that Allah has given me you know, that ability to teach people as well, mm. Mm. you know. And another thing that I did was I, I decorated the mosque, you know. 
And that also helped me a lot, you know, okay. by decorating as, the masjid. As one of your first projects. One of my biggest projects, yeah. Mm. I think, um, and I'm grateful to Mr. Gangrika of, of WMD. He's the first person that approached me to do uh, okay. the Gatesville Mosque. The Gatesville my, Mosque in, in uh, Cape Town. In Cape Town, in Ryan. Mm. So that was my very first project mm. that I did. Mm. Blindly, because I didn't know what I was doing, but, you know, <laughs> like you, I said, you know, I just... To, back to self. Yeah, I just thought to myself, you know, Allah will guide me and he will mm. show me, you know. It's not the best that I, you know, have done, you know. I've done other messages in Pretoria and all of Benoni and stuff yeah, like but that. But it was the first. That was the first. Yeah. That's unique, isn't it? That's unique. Islam and all those messages I've done. Hmm. And, 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 and uh, does it pay to do these things? For, for masjids? <laughs> Any artist that paying for money is not an artist. You know, the money doesn't really matter. Okay. It's the honor of being able to degrade the house of Allah. Okay. It's a great honor. And that's how you see it. That, not that so. is how I see it most, you know. Mm. But unfortunately, I've got to be realistic. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can't say I can live in fresh air. Yeah. So I, I give a quote, I give a price for a job, mm. you know. Mm. And if they can't pay me, then alhamdulillah, you know. But mm. i got to support my family as well. So okay. if I got to charge mm. for what I'm doing. Mm. It's a sad reality, but it is, it is like it, you know. Mm. Okay. Now, just hold that thought. When you come back, I just want to explore a little bit more on the some of the first works that you did when we get back. Thank you very much. Inshallah.